I have always been uh, apprehensive about what happened in Kenya. I said that I was not going to talk about the 2022 elections uh, until certain things had happened. Because what happened in Kenya was very sad indeed. Uh, the Kenyan people got, came out in large numbers on the 9th of August to exercise their democratic right of electing their leaders. In my view, that kind of uh, right should be respected uh, by everybody else. Nobody should try to interfere with the right of the people. The sovereign right to elect leadership of their choice. Unfortunately, what happened in Kenya was regrettable, particularly when it came to the presidential elections. There was a lot of manipulation of election results by the agency that had been appointed there to ensure free, fair, and transparent electoral process, the IEBC. Uh, we were shocked at how they handled themselves. But let me just say that the electoral process, for at the, in as far as the people voting at the polling station, the counting and announcing results at the polling station, the tallying at the constituency center and the transmission, they all went very well. There was no uh, interference at those levels, and the results were, were, were declared uh, in a very transparent way. The problem became with the transmission and tallying and announcement of the results at the National Tallying Center, which was purely for the presidential votes only. That's where the problem was. Where the problem was because uh, uh, a scheme had been orchestrated to basically undermine the will of the people. It is a process that started way back before the election day. Can people remember that a, a team of mercenaries was arrested at the airport uh, when their baggage was x-rayed and revealed that they were carrying certain materials, particular electoral materials, uh, which had not been declared. And there was no official from the Electoral Commission to meet them at the airport. When asked, they said that they were going to meet somebody who is an agent of the IBC. These items they were carrying were confiscated by the security agencies. And when analyzed, they found that these people had secret codes of IBC and so on that they could actually interfere with the electoral process. They could enter the IBC system and compromise the results. What they had. There's a report which was compiled by the uh, Directorate of, of Criminal Investigations. These people were supposed to be uh, charged in a court of law. But when the head of the intelligence convened a meeting, which included the Directorate of Criminal Investigations, the um, Electoral Commission uh, chairman, uh, the uh, head of uh, uh, internal security, and so on, Mr. Chebukati actually gave a threat that if those people, Mr. Chebukati, the chairman of the IBC, were not released, then elections would have to be postponed. And these were his agents. What was surprising is that their presence or their coming was not unknown by other members of the Electoral Commission. They were only reporting to the chairman of the Electoral Commission. 
these mercenaries. And then another investigation was carried out by IBC, which revealed that there were 19 other people who had come in from this same group that was working for this smartmatic company, a company which had been employed to provide ICT services to the, to the, to the IBC. There were a total of 21 people out of which 19 were foreigners. Other, other members of the Electoral Commission did not know of the presence of these other 19. Those 19 are people whose uh, record from investigations showed that they are people with criminal records in ICT. They had committed cyber crimes. In other countries, they are being looked for, like in Sri Lanka. They were, they were being looked for. So these were basically crooks who had been smuggled in the country by the IBC for purposes of compromising the electoral process. Um, come now the, the day of, of the knee of the elections. The elections were, people can turned up in numbers to vote and they exercise their right at the polling station. And the counting and tallying at the polling station was flawless. After that, the presiding officers went with the results to the constituency tallying center. Again, at that center, there were no problems. The tallying was done, and at, at the polling station, they came with from 34 A's, they called, for the presidential vote. At the uh, uh, constituency turning center, then the, the returning officer now had what is called 34 Bs for the presidential votes. So tallied. And each time this tally was done, the form would be scanned and then will be transmitted to the, the, the server at the, at the national level. Now, one assumed that those results were the ones which were being un, uh, received by the Electoral Commission and which were going to be announced. What we have now discovered since that time is a different story. First, we, we discovered that there were four different servers. There's one server which was in the, in the, uh, the Netherlands in the clouds. Two, there was another server in Venezuela. Three, there was another server in the anniversary towers, headquarters of the Electoral Commission. Four, there was another server in the industrial area. And fifth, there was a portal at the National Tallying Center at the Bombers of Kenya. So what would happen was that when these results were being transmitted for the polling station, uh, and even at, from the constituency turning center, they were going to these four servers. But it was the server in Venezuela where it was manipulating the results, altering results, and transmitting to the portal which was at the national turning center. That is where the, 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 the crime was, was committed so that the results which were at the National Telling Center were differed uh, to a very large extent from the results which had come from the constituency telling center. Uh, so what was, uh, therefore, what now happens is that you have the results which had come from the constituency telling center and they were available in the server at the IBC uh, headquarters and anniversary towers. At the Tallinn Center, the Bombers of Kenya, our agents were suspicious with people who were walking around with gadgets and which were involved in uh, altering results. And uh, 
attention of the chairman of the electoral commission was actually drawn to these facts. Now, the chairman of the electoral commission had said that he was not going to announce the presidential re result outcome until he had received the originals of forms 30, uh, forms 34 Bs from the uh, uh, the uh, returning officers uh, of 290 constituencies plus one which is for the diaspora therefore 291 that he would only be able to complete from 34 C out of this total of 291 uh, uh, from 34Bs. That is how when he was going to originate 34Cs. That is what he said. But then uh, what happened was different. As you know, as the telling was going on, the, port, the portal was live and the people were seeing on the television screen the Result as being coming from constituencies to being announced and and and, and the people were so showing it, so the figures keep on changing. However, two days before the the end of the exercise, they stopped the portal. It was no longer sh uh, showing anything. And then they were going through constituencies, but they were no, no longer being posted the portal. Then now they reached a stage where there were 29 constituencies which still remained. The chairman stopped the exercise at that point. And then later he said he was going to rest. He went to rest. He went away for eight hours. He was completely incommunicado. When he returned after those eight hours, he came and then called the commissioners and told him that he had the final results, which he wanted to announce. They asked him, but when we left here, we had still 29 constituencies, which were not, had not been tallied. He said that his staff had already t uh, tallied all that, and he has now the final results, which he wanted to announce. He told him, but we don't know how you've arrived at these results. Uh, and we have not even discussed this as a commission. He said, no, I'm the returning officer of the toll prerogative to announce the results that I'm going to announce. At that which point now, these other commissioners walked away, protesting, saying that they could not be party to a process that was opaque, that they had not been party to. Uh, and then that's how they walked away and they went and then addressed the press conference. Chibukati, of course, went then and, and made his uh, own uh, announcement. We were not satisfied. Our people were, of course, uh, uh, tantalized. But we said, look, uh, follow the process of the law. So we'll go to the Supreme Court. And we went to the Supreme Court. But what happened in the Supreme Court was uh, uh, a charade because at the Supreme Court our lawyers demanded access to the server so that they could be able to download uh, information which is available in the server. In spite of their our lawyers repeated demand to the court one of the judges there who was in charge of ICT kept on uh, uh, pushing the matter Lenaola. behind. Yes, yes, Justice Lenaola. He knew exactly why he was doing it. And uh, Smartmatic wrote a letter, whose copy we have, saying that they cannot allow other people into the server because that would infringe on their proprietary rights. Now you ask yourself, this is a company which has been engaged by the government 
to provide ICT services to the Electoral Commission. And there's now a petition against the results which uh, uh, have been announced by the Electoral Commission being disputed by one of the parties involved. And this party is being denied access to the server where the records are. Now, how can you then be having a genuine case? How can you prosecute a, 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 an effective case? The court did not see this as strange. The court did not see this as strange. That's why we have our doubts about the uh, impartiality of that bench, of that bench. Because then after that, uh, of course, we provided sufficient evidence. Our lawyers, for example, gave an example of, uh, you know, uh, a, a live, you know, I, 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 IBC server where they, they showed uh, manipulation of results, showing even the signature of somebody, one uh, Jose uh, Camargo, a Venezuelan, his signature in, in the document, and asking what was Jose Camargo, Camargo doing with the, the electoral process. They showed that one of the uh, chemskits, because chemskit was supposed to be uh, distinct. Each chemskit had its own identification number and it could not be duplicated. But now I have a case where one chemskit was transmitting results from a, a polling station in Mount Elgon. And then within eight minutes, it was transmitting the same one, so it was transmitting results from a polling station in Nyeri over 300 kilometers away, the question was, how did this happen? The court did not find this as strange at all. But the fact is that these re re results were being transmitted from one center uh, in, in Venezuela. That's the fact that we have now established. Okay? So uh, uh, then the Supreme Court went and made this ruling which, of course, we said we respect, but we disagreed with. Uh, and the language that they used in that judgment is awful. So we said, shame on the Supreme Court. But we said, the truth will come out one day. This is not the first time that we went to the Supreme Court. You remember, we went to the Supreme Court in, in 2013. Then we went to the Supreme Court in 2017. In 2017, we had evidence, of course. And in 2017, the Supreme Court annulled the results and said that the, the chairman of the Electoral Commission himself was culpable. Now, the evidence that we had this time around was much more weightier the evidence that we had in 2017. But we were shocked and concerned at the behavior of the Supreme Court this time round. We were really very shocked and, and, and surprised at what the Supreme Court did. It was basically uh, a contempt against the will of the people of Kenya, which is very unfortunate indeed. But then, uh, as they say that uh, the, 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 the ills that men do uh, lives on to, to haunt them. Here we are now, an insider of one of the officials of IBC has had at least the courage to come forward and reveal what transpired within the IBC. I think this is something that needs to be encouraged very much. It is a shock. I asked one of these diplomats in Kenya, I said, a situation we saw, the kind of suckers we saw at IBC, where four commissioners are saying no, three commissioners are saying yes, uh, and then you still say that that result is valid. Would this happen in Europe? 
they told me no, in Europe it would not be accepted. In fact, that country would be suspended from being a member of EU. But I said, but in Africa, it is okay. It is not okay in Europe, but in Africa, the, you can apply different standards. I am saying as a proud African that Africa should not be judged by different standards. If this thing is not acceptable in Europe, it should also not be acceptable in Africa. And therefore, I'm saying that the facts that are there shows that Mr. William Ruto did not win an election. He lost the elections. I won the elections. So he's there illegally as a president. And what we are going to demand is that Mr. Ruto should resign and let the Kenyans have their will. The people's will is the God's will. And in my view, that is what should happen. He says that he's a man of God. He respects uh, righteousness. He respects the rule of law. So let him follow. Let him live up to what he has been professing. These elections were flawed. He did not win these elections. He lost them. And I am happy and I'm proud of the people of Kenya. I want to thank the people of Kenya for conducting themselves peacefully these elections. The areas which uh, they say that people did not vote for me, like in central Kenya. But these results have shown that the people of Ke central Kenya voted for me overwhelmingly. So I want to thank them for their patriotic duty. What happened is not the mistake. Their will was subverted by agents of impunity at Bombers of Kenya. From the results which have come out uh, from the whistleblower, with an insider, it has shown very clearly how the people of Kenya spoke on that day. And it's shown that uh, my uh, challenger got 5.9 million votes against 8.1 million votes. There's a difference of 2.2 million votes, which cannot be challenged. Uh, and uh, that's why I'm challenging Mr. Ruto to accept the will of the people of Kenya. Because otherwise, it is going to be like an illegitimate government uh, ruling the country. It's just like a civilian coup that has been orchestrated by the IBC and in connivance with Mr. Ruto himself. In my view, this is not right. The voice of the people or the voice of God. Vox Populi, Vox Dei. Now I've said that the people of Kenya express their will through these elections. Those who are resident in the country voted for me overwhelmingly. Secondly, the Kenyans who live in diaspora, in the United States, in Europe, in Africa, particularly in South Southern Africa, turned up and, and voted. And the diaspora vote, although it was not as huge as uh, would have been expected, but it was majority for on, uh, uh, in my favor. So I want to thank them for turning up and voting and voting for me in those elections. I want to thank them very much and I tell them that their vote did not go in vain. When we form a government, we will definitely work together with them.